Okay, so our topic for this afternoon is introduction to motor controllers. Okay, so first we have the first part of the topic which is all about motor controller basics. Okay, so what is a motor controller? So it is a device or group of device that serves to govern in some predetermined manner the performance of an electric motor. A motor controller might include a manual or automatic means of starting and stopping the motor, selecting forward or reverse rotation, selecting and regulating the speed, regulating or limiting the torque, and protecting against overloads and faults. Okay, so from your answer on the mintimeter, so some of you, as of you mentioned, no? The protecting against overloads and faults, so overcurrent protection. Also, starting and stopping the motor. Okay, so you have given the correct answer. So, in summary, a motor controller is a device. No? It could be a single device or a group of devices. So, its main purpose is to govern, no? govern or to control the performance of an electric motor okay so we have two common types of motor controller so first we have the direct online or the dol and we have the reduced voltage starter so for the direct online starters so it is the simplest of method of starting motors so it usually used to start motors of low HP or horsepower rating, typically not more than 5 horsepower. So the direct online starting is sometimes used to start small water pumps, compressors, fans, and conveyor belts. So the direct online, so you could apply or you could use the direct online starter on low HP motors, no? typically not more than 5 horsepower. Okay, so its main application is for water pumps, compressors, fans, conveyor belts. No? For conveyor belts. Then we have the reduced voltage starter. So if we go beyond the 5 horsepower rating of a motor, so there is now the so called lock current, no? a lock rotor current. And the lock rotor current can be six times no the normal operation or the normal operating current of the motor for example if your full load current of the motor is 10 amperes so when the motor is starting so six times so that would be 60 amperes so it may uh, damage your conductor damage your um uh, breaker no so it could damage the motor itself so a way to reduce the starting current is to reduce the voltage applied to the motor so if we reduce the voltage so basic ohms law we will also reduce the current because the resistance on the motor is constant no? because the resistance in the motor depends on the winding okay so reducing the voltage can be achieved by three methods so by using a resistor and connecting it in series with the motor windings by using a transformer and by changing the wiring configuration on the motor during starting so the first method no, using resistor so this is called the um, the primary resistor starting no? then the um, second one using a transformer so this is the auto transformer starting and the third one, no, the by changing the wiring configuration, so that is the Y delta starting. Okay, so we have here reduced voltage starters. So we will discuss individually those three types of reduced voltage starters. So we have primary resistor starters. So this starter allows a large resistor to be connected in series with the supply voltage for a specified 
amount of time until the motor is running approximately 65% of the full, full RPM so the revolutions per minute so 65% um, percent. so if the motor is starting so the the primary resistors which are connected in series will engage now it will engage then after the after sometimes the motor is now running 65 percent of its full rpm then it will disengage now one of its advantage is the voltage that is dropped by the resistor is turned it so that is the one of the disadvantage no? disadvantage not an advantage so the voltage is turned into heat so this can cause overheating no? overheating to the motor circuit conductor and to the motor itself then we have the auto transformer starter so it works by allowing the motor to start at a lower voltage using an auto transformer with multiple taps on it so unlike the primary resistor starter it does not give heat its only advantage is sometimes the auto transformer is expensive and if you have a higher um if you have a higher voltage no motor or a, a high um, hp motor then it will require a larger auto transformer and your uh, motor starter now will be uh, also larger and it will occupy some space okay next we will go to why delta i'll go now to the why delta starter Okay, so this starter is utilized, uh, utilizes the reconfiguration of the motor terminals to reduce the voltage. So the motor is start up at a lower voltage by configuring it to the connection of a Y, no? And then sometime reconfiguring it to connection into delta. Okay, so at the starting of the motor, the winding of the motor is configured as Y so that we could reduce the voltage and all thereby reducing the lock rotor current. Then after some time, so usually we're using a timer, no? so 3 to 5 minutes, so depending on the HP of the motor, it, it will um, reconfigure no? into delta. So by that moment so the, the motor can now function in its full rpm or full speed and can give a full torque okay now we have motor control components okay motor control components so first we have the conductor so this is the heart of the motor controller you know so conductors are electromechanically operated no switch so these are switch when you say electromechanically so by electromagnetism so that provide a safe and convenient means of connecting and interrupting branch circuits so this is a conductor no so the brand is abb no? So, as you can see, we have here L1, L2, L3. So I hope it will be clear on your cell phone screen. We have T1, T2, and T3. So, when we have L1, L2, and L3, that is the supply, no? the wire. So, the wire of the supply. So, if you are going to wire this one, so the supply wires will connect on this terminals now these three terminals below is the t1 t2 and t3 so that is the uh, the um, terminal wherein the terminal of the motors will be connected of course the the conductor can be reversed if it is a ac conductor but 
if we are going to follow the standard no the standard so we must put the uh, proper wires to its uh, proper terminals then this one the last terminals with the last pair of terminals so these are the auxiliary terminals so as you can see it is no when we see no normally open okay. so we will discuss further what is normally open and normally close um, um, later on this uh, discussion no? then we have push button so this type of hand switch is a two position device operated with a button that is pressed and released most push button switches have internal spring mechanism returning the button to its out or unpressed position for a moment operation it comes in a momentary or maintained action so the takeaway for this one is the push button is momentary so when we say momentary for example if you push that one it will uh, on or off the circuit then if you will remove your finger then it will go back to its normal state either it is that is normally open or normally closed so this is a push button so when we have the green the green is usually run or go then red is stop or idle so then we have selector switches you know? so these are actuated with a rotary knob or a lever of some sort to select one of two or more positions so like the toggle switch selector switches can either rest in any of their position or contain a spring return mechanism for momentary operation okay so this is a selector switch so the selector switch you could select uh, different positions position so the the common uh, usage of a selector switch is in your electric fan so the electric fan uses a selector switch but in motor controllers so the selector switch is mainly used to set your motor controller either it will be manual or automatic then you have limit switch so these switches are operated by machine machine motion so they are useful in automation and control application so when we say machine motion so if this part of the switch here will be um, pressed no by maybe a, a a action of a machine or a certain weight no so it will turn or turn off the motor controller depending on the normal state of the switch if it is normally open or normally closed then we have the control relay so use as auxiliary device to switch control circuits and large motor starter and contactor coils and to control small loads such as small motors solenoids electric heaters pilot lights and other relays so the control relay can act like a contactor but in small motors no so if it is now larger motors we will use the contactor so usually if we are um, going to uh, have our motor controlled by a uh, PLC uh, prog a programmable logic controller so the output of the PLC will be feed into into the controller and the output of the controller uh, now this controller relay then the output of the control relay will be feed no? into the contactors so so by that so we could say that the the controller will save as a uh, serve as the bridge between the PLC and the contactor then we have pilot light no? a small mushroom shaped bulb 
use a signaling device. So each color represent a state in the motor control operation. So these these are the common no? common um, these are the common pilot lights. No? So we have the color green so it, it indicates run or the motor is running red stop or idle yellow sometimes it will use the orange um, it will indicate as fault or emergency so there is a problem on the motor then last we have the timer delay relays or the timer relay so timer relay Time, timer delay relays are divided into two general classification the on delay and the off delay so the contacts of this relay delay on changing their position for some period of time so if we if we say on delay so the on delay is um, during the the um, moment wherein the timer has been supplied with a voltage source then it will act on its um, setting then after some time it will for example set five minutes so it will uh, disengage you know? for the off delay so at the start it will uh, it will be set or it will act on its normal uh, normal setting in after five minutes or depending on the setting of the timer it will change state you know, either normally open or normally close so the useful purpose of the timer relay in motor controllers is to control um, contactors in a sequential manner so so especially the y delta no, the y delta controller so because the y delta um, utilizes the timer relay in uh, in the process of changing from Y configuration to Delta configuration.